So if you're looking to grow your brand or your business with brand deals, either if you're going to be an advertiser or you're going to be a person that's getting a sponsorship, I'm gonna talk about a few things that you need to do to make sure that it's set up so that you can have as much success as possible. So let's get into today's video. Hey there everybody, my name is Brandon Brashears. I do daily digital marketing videos here. So if you're trying to grow your brand or your business with digital marketing, be sure to subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, need help with anything, please comment below. And if you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. So let's talk about brand deals. In brand deals, you want to have everybody win. You need to win, your audience needs to win, and the brand or sponsor needs to win. So how do you do that? I think that you need to think about this in that kind of a circumstance, no matter what. So that being said, um, whether you are the person that's doing the brand sponsorship or you are the brand that's being sponsored, you need to have things in alignment. First, is the audience the right audience for the product or service? If it's not, it's going to be essentially spam. The permission that your audience has given you as a content creator is extremely valuable. And as a brand or a business, you don't necessarily want to do business with everybody. So you need to make sure that, hey, are these demographics and are these psychographics the right ones? Demographics are the actual data points, like the uh, you know 35-year-old male who lives in California. The psychographics are the things that they're interested in, the things that they care about. Right, so maybe a 35 year old male who lives in California who is a animal rights activist. That's the last part is a psychographics, right? So we need to consider all of that in creation of the video and the partnership or the piece of content that you're doing. It doesn't, it shouldn't be forced. You know, doing Dollar Shave Club um, or Squarespace or other large scale brand deals, they typically work out well because you know everybody can use Dollar Shave Club, but I would be sure to put your spin on it to be authentic because you know as a, that relates specifically to creators, um, you don't want to seem like you're just selling out your audience, selling out their attention. So you need to make sure that they're understanding why you're doing this and what's in it for them and things like that. You know, uh, specifically if you talk about you know, this gives us the opportunity to make more content. It gives us the opportunity to do more high quality. You know, you make it in terms of what's in it for the audience in, in that kind of a situation. So you have to make sure that you're aligned well. That's going to make it effective for both the sponsor and the audience and the creator. So everything needs to be a win-win-win across the board. The second thing that I think is pretty critical, unless you're doing a strictly brand deal where you're just trying to get branding awareness, and there's not too many companies that are benefited specifically from branding awareness, just because, I mean, you can run display ads for extremely cheap on Google, but it doesn't really do anything, right? Having somebody see your logo over and over and over again without having an end offer in mind is not necessarily the most highest use of your your resources, in my opinion. Now, this is my opinion. I do direct response digital marketing. So there's kind of two different aspects of digital marketing. Direct response is, hey, we're gonna sell something, we're gonna generate a lead, we're gonna get a result, and we're gonna measure that cost per action. Branding is like, hey, I'm gonna put a billboard up and people are gonna drive by it, they're gonna see it, they're gonna get brand recognition. So I obviously value direct response more, but there is a time and a place for branding. I totally get it. And uh, like, don't let my bias influence you, but I always like to have some specific objective, some measurable way to determine whether or not the ad campaign was worth the money to the person who spent it, and also was it actually providing value on behalf of the creator. So you need to make sure like, hey, we did this campaign, we sold 30 products, it generated this many sales, and we generated you know, 58 additional emails, and we know that we're gonna sell down the road to these people. So like, here's the actual value that we delivered. That's direct response marketing. So how do we do that? Typically having a special offer, a special promo code, a special link that we can track and measure performance across each step. So the first step in any brand deal would be, hey, this is a sponsored video. If you comment or if you link, click the link below, you will get this deal. We're gonna be able to measure the top of funnel metrics. So people that have viewed the video that have gotten that awareness, we're gonna be able to measure middle of funnel, uh, type activities, which is clicks. So they're evaluating the offer. And then bottom of funnel, which is conversions. So how many people actually purchased? And we can measure the conversion rate across that. You know, if we have a ton of people who view a piece of content, a ton of people who click and take action, but then they don't convert, there's usually a mismatch between the messaging and the actual sales page. So it might not be your fault as the creator, or if you're doing a brand deal and you're not getting a ton of sales, but you're getting a ton of clicks, 
when they look like they're legitimate, maybe you need to reconsider your landing page and your closing process because maybe you have a good potential for a brand deal, but it's not working out necessarily. So that being said, make sure that, that you can, number one, have great specifically, you know, um, relevant products and services for this brand. And then number two, you need to make sure that it is trackable and you have the, the proper things set up in place to track every step of this process. And then I think number three, you need to realize that depending on your audience, where you are um, on the internet and where your audience is consuming this type of content and information, it's going to make the deal very different as far as, you know, what is an Instagram post worth versus what is a YouTube video worth versus what is a blog post worth versus what is a sponsored email worth. Each one of these mediums has a far different context with the audience and you're gonna have baselines that are different across the board there. So making sure that you're valuing these different mediums differently, and especially if you can prove you know, really good results on one medium versus another, it's, I think, in general, you know, typically better to have you know, your specific medium, I'd say. So I, don't, I know that's kind of a roundabout thing, but depending on what the goal is of, of the company and making sure that it meets the, the needs of the, the audience, and then also it needs to, the offer and the, the, the feel of the whole process needs to meet that medium that you're going to be on. I hope that that makes sense. I know that's kind of confusing, but each one of these platforms kind of has a different culture. Instagram is far different than YouTube, which is far different than Facebook, which is far different from Snapchat, which is extremely different from LinkedIn. And the way that people interact with each one of these mediums is just night and day difference. So you can't expect just because you have the same number of followers on Facebook as you do on Instagram, that you're gonna get similar results. So I think that that's really, really important. Now, the other thing that I think you can do in general is use your content, or if you're a, an advertiser, make sure that you're capturing pixel data. Make sure that you're sharing pixel data. Make sure that you're able to remarket to people who viewed the videos. That kind of things and those add-ons are gonna help you to be a lot more successful with your brand deals. So if you're the brand who wants to do a sponsored post, make sure that you're able to remarket to people who view that video. Make sure that you're able to get, you know, let's say it's Instagram stories or um, whatever it is, make sure you're able to engage with those people. Each one of the ad platforms that you're doing has great remarketing features right now. Those may not be around forever, especially with all of the move towards privacy. You know, you are gonna see a lot more ad platforms that say, you know what, you can't do remarketing anymore. You know what, pixels aren't going to be allowed. People want their privacy. And when that happens, that's gonna be a bummer for advertisers. So make sure you're using your tools to the most that you can. Make sure that you're getting everything out of it that you can. and. Again, make sure that you're trying to benefit all parties. Make sure it's a win-win-win. If you have any questions or any comments or need help with anything, please comment below. I'm happy to help. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you on the next one. Have a great day.